Memphis and Lynch, Mac David Pontiac, Fort Worth and Derby. Right wide track. <laughs> this is Channel 11, KTVT, Fort Worth, Dallas. Times are tough to save for things is rough. Inflation's high, it's hard to buy. Seems you'll never have enough. Well, you can get it now. At Renko, we can show you how. Why cramp your style? Why wait a while? When you can get it now. At Renko, you can get it now. See the white pages for your nearest Renko store. Now, during Coslow's greatest ever January fur sale, save 30, 40, even 50% on a fabulous selection of our finest furs. Now at Coslow's, Dallas and Fort Worth. Brighten your table now with splendid savings from Dillard's White Sale. Save 20 to 30% and dine on the subtle beauty of Noritake China in five-piece settings and complete sets. Save on lustrous Oneida stainless flatware from Dillard's, including graceful Monte Carlo for only $11.99 a setting. Add the sparkle of imported French lead crystal, including the classic long champ design for only $4.99 a stem. Enhance your table with lavish savings now during Dillard's White Sale. Haverty's has it. We've got it all. This may well be the most extraordinary bedroom bargain of the year. The charming bounty collection from famous Huntley by Thomasville. Now half price at Haverty's. You get the triple dresser with mirror, queen or full size headboard, nightstand and door chest. The complete set while they last $9.99 at Haverty's. Haverty's has it. We've got it all. Your Treasury Discount Department store brings you our spectacular week-long dollar date sale. Bargains like Lux Bath Soap, five bars for a dollar. Extra absorbent daytime pampers, sale two packs, five dollars. Fifty count Mr. Coffee filter packs, special three for a dollar. Scott Towel, sale two rolls a dollar. And Waldorf Tissue packs of four, sale price four packs, 16 rolls, three dollars. These supervise and more during our dollar date sale. Now through Saturday at your Treasury Discount Department store. Now you can cash in on some terrific savings at Buddies and Win Dixie with cash dividend specials. A jumbo roll of Valley Paper Towels is 29 cents. A two liter bottle of Dr. Pepper is 59 cents. Get a pound of Hickory Sweet sliced bacon for 89 cents. With two filled certificates, a pound can of Folgers coffee is $1.59. Low, low prices are back again and they're yours with cash dividends at Buddies and Win Dixie. You know, the biggest problem in going to the movies is getting a babysitter. But now with View Home Subscription TV, all the big hits come to you. Over 40 first-run movies each month. Uncut, uncensored, and uninterrupted, just like you'd see them in a theater. Now, for the first time, pay TV is immediately available to every TV set in the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex. Now you can see the Mavericks live and uninterrupted. I love you. Call now for immediate installation, 988-3100. You ought to bring your film to Eckerd's. This place is fine. But at Eckerd's, you get twice the prints. Uh, this place is okay. And Eckerd's gives you two rolls of film for the price of one. Mm, I don't know about this place. Well, now you know, whenever you have your film developed at Eckerd, we give you twice the prints on Kodak paper, two rolls of Kodak film for the price of one, and you don't pay for the prints you don't like. So you ought to bring your film to Eckerd Drugs. Yeah. Well, what kind of place is this anyway? The good life has its advantages. Among them, the Dream Sponge Sheet by Fieldcrest. Next to your skin, pure, soft cotton percale, touched with satin. And yet Dream Spun requires no ironing. Cost more? Of course. The good life always does. Now, the Dream Spun Sheet by Fieldcrest. That's Sanger Harris. The good life made affordable. Do you think there's no difference in chicken? Look at this. Here's a chicken that's been rushed to market too early. It's skinny, bony. Here's a Holly Farms chicken. It's plump and meaty. That's because Holly Farms takes the time to raise their chickens to plump perfection. And that means your family gets more good eating per pound. The choice is yours. Skinny chicken or plump 
Meaty Holly Farms. There is a difference. Listen to the exciting sounds of the Lowry organ in concert. Our first Lowry artist is Johnny Kim, courtesy of Concert Recordings. are the newlyweds. I love you. They're expecting a baby. Ah! And they're the landlords. Well, like, what's happening in this neighborhood? Yeah, white folks are moving there. It's always a bad sign. And they all live together. Is that all the two of you have to do? Married People, Wednesdays this fall. Great news. Now you can enjoy your favorite pizza at your favorite place, home. Because now Pizza Hut delivers. You're just a phone call away from all those abundant toppings, two layers of cheese, and now delivered right to your door. Come on, what are you waiting for? What would you say if you could get a Pizza Hut pepperoni pizza for just $2.99? Break That's right. Buy any large pizza at regular menu price and get a medium pepperoni pizza for just $2.99. Pizza Hut, making it great. Fall's almost here. Time for another TJ Maxx Super Buy. We've got fashions juniors will be crazy about and at a super price. Great looking shoes, famous name jeans, shirts, and sweaters, all at the amazing TJ Maxx price of just $14.99 each. If you knew what department stores were getting for these, you'd get down here quick. Another Super Buy. Exciting fall fashions for just $14.99 each, and it's going on right now at TJ Maxx. TJ Maxx. Showers and cooler days in the forecast. Details on the late edition. Hi, I think the best thing about doing Funny America is working with children because I love children and they love me. Right, Chanel? <laughs> it's Tim Conway's Funny America. Starring Tim Conway. Tonight, it's a Moroccan roll dance party. Bumping and grinding. <laughs> Our in-flight movie this evening will be Night of the Living Shoe Salesman. And later, how was the West One anyway? Yep, 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 yo. Yep, yo. We may never know. <laughs> Please welcome Tim Conway.
Thank you. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you and welcome to our show. And I say our show because it is our show. It's half mine, it's, it's half yours. And you worked awfully hard last week. Let's show you what you guys did last week because you were terrific. Incidentally, have you ever talked to a TV set? You know, you're in a room alone and all of a sudden you find yourself talking to a TV set. I think you have, obviously. <laughs> Can you imagine what would happen if it actually answered you? Well, these unsuspecting people were caught in that situation. Watch this. Stay right here. I'll be right back, okay? Because we got a price of two ninety five. I'm going to try and get it down to 200 for you, okay? All right, guys. Thanks a lot. Be right back. Excuse me. Hey, Victor? Is it Victor or Charlie? Yeah, we Wait, you Victor? <laughs> You bet. Yeah. You try to sell you a set. Yeah, he did. He did. Yeah. Look, he's going to tell you a little bit about trying to bring it down on commission or something. What do you say? Bring you one for two hundred. Let's picture. Read my list. One thirty-five. That's as much as you go. Okay. You're telling me now you don't want to buy this. I thought you wanted to buy it. You don't want to buy it. Okay. You don't want to buy it. Well, then I, you're not going to. I'll give it to you for one eighty. Anyway, I, come on. I, I got to make a sale here. One fifty. One fifty? No. He offered me ninety. Here, who offered you ninety? The, the one without the hair. The one without the hair. Just look up. See, see where the tube beats the top here, right along here. You see the little white crack in the tube. I'm just pointing this out in case you wanted to buy a TV. That um, if you look for that little crack, that tube. Just to feel the heat of the off this tube. It's coming out. Don't really wipe it off now. Just a little. Here, let me. Can you see a little white crack? Mm, yes. Okay. Because if you have not the ceiling, Deidre, the television. Oh. Yeah. Why would there be a crack in the ceiling? <laughs> now, on these particular sets, put your hand on the tube. Now, touch the screen, not the other part of the TV. Yeah, just don't. Ow. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Boy, uh, get your finger out of my eye there, boy. Oh, and my nose. Yeah. Okay, good luck with your life, Deidre. Get them down to 100. You can't leave me before I make a deal. Oh, I'm not going anywhere. You got any kind of credit card? Yeah. <laughs> Let me take it out. This is my This is yeah. mine. That's okay. Can you see it? Right. Well, hold it up to the side. Okay, let me see. <laughs> <laughs> come on down one uh, TV over, just one more over here, over this way. Yeah, over this way. Here, come on. Ah, that's better. Okay, I'll look. Could you scratch my nose for me? Thank you. That's Excuse great. me. Who, who are you talking to here? On the TV. On the television, you're seeing a guy? I don't see a guy. What? Where is he? He's behind me now. So if I turn around, I can see him. I don't see him. So you're you're talking to a guy who's on these televisions, see? and he's right behind me, and and I'll turn around and, and see him. Yeah. Okay. Where? You, are you guys are crazy? You've had too much sugar. You have had too much sugar. Right he's right there. Okay. Are you pulling my leg? No. What are you doing to me? See? Trying to make me look. Hey. Is there a guy there? Yeah. And, and that's who, who are you talking to? See? You can hear him. I don't see him when I don't... Oh. Oh. Is that the guy? Yeah. And he was talking to you? Yeah. He can't talk. He's a picture. He can talk. No, he can't talk. He's a picture. <laughs> you know what it is? You and you and whoever this guy is are playing a joke on me. No, we're not. No, he's playing a joke on you. He's playing a joke on me. Yeah. This guy over here. Yeah. And that, and... <laughs> Let's try something. Ready? Mm -hmm. I'm looking at you. What is he doing? He's talking. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> we, uh... We do a lot of traveling across the country, and uh, I guess you probably do, too. Have you ever noticed that there, as you go across the country, are a lot of those low-budget used car commercials with some crazy local guy who gets on and he hawks these junkers to you? Where did these guys come from? How do they get on television, huh? Well, I think we may have the answer for you, because there's a friend of mine to show you exactly how they get there. Oh, Pete... Mm -hmm. 
I've tried fad diets, powders, pills. Still, my weight's been up and down like a yo-yo until the AIDS plan taught me how to take off weight and help keep it off. AIDS may taste like a candy, but AIDS contains one of the most effective appetite suppressants you can buy, and there's no stimulant in AIDS that could make you nervous. With AIDS, I ate less, so the weight came off. To help keep it off when I sometimes want things loaded with calories, AIDS helps put me in control. Let the AIDS plan teach you how to take off weight and help keep it off. Try peanut butter AIDS. Those terrific tummies. They have no idea what some tummies are put through. From bending and binding, shaking and shifting, just to make them flat. Introducing the new belly burn. It can flatten your stomach. Although it looks easy, it isn't. But it works and can work for everybody. No matter what shape you're in right now, the belly burner can help you lose inches and develop abdominal muscles properly. Besides the heart, the stomach muscles are some of the most important in your body. The belly burner method safely develops the stomach muscles and strengthens your lower back. With just a 15-minute workout once a day, you'll see the results in a short period of time. There are many advantages to this proven method over other exercises. It's a program you can easily stay with and you'll notice results quickly. It develops the right muscles the right way. It helps control your diet, helps strengthen vital organs, prolongs stomach muscle endurance, and contributes to your overall body physiology. Order your belly burner today, and we'll include Jim Everroad's bestseller, How to Flatten Your Stomach. I'm convinced this system is the best and quickest way to flatten your stomach. Now, if you don't agree, return it, and I'll return your money. The Belly Burner, only $19.95 during this limited TV offer. Excellent for those who want to lose weight and inches, and perfect for those who want to stay fit. And look, the apparatus is so compact, you can take it anywhere. Great for the home, the office, or on the road. The Belly Burner, it's patented, proven, and it works beautifully. Twitter from anywhere in the U.S., including Alaska and Hawaii, phone toll-free 1-800-257-1234. Or send check or money order for $19.95 plus $3 for shipping and handling to Belly Burner. P.O. Box 7500, Atlanta, Georgia, 30357. That's Belly Burner, Box 7500, Atlanta, Georgia. Then there must be something better to do 
skimming through the paper at the end of the day I saw a classified I couldn't believe A lonely young lady who feels a lot like I do Had a message that would set me free Got a part-time job in my heart Inquiries are welcome Write a letter and we'll make a start Don't want to get involved Hope you'll understand me I want the capability to be free Situation bigger Got a part-time job in my heart Situation bigger Got a part-time job in my heart A night for Excedrin PM. Why can't I turn off this day? Daddy said I can't. You're late. No receipt, no refund. My head aches and I can't sleep. You want Excedrin PM. Strong aspirin-free headache medicine you can feel good about. Plus a gentle ingredient to help you sleep. They're sending me to Paris. Alone. Turn off the day with Excedrin PM and rest assured it's aspirin-free. Some people think the only way to keep a carpet looking new is to avoid walking on it. But this is new Master Life. It's made of a tough DuPont fiber that can stand up to even heavy foot traffic and stay beautiful for years. Hey, Dad. Thanks for the car, Dad. DuPont Master Life. The more you walk on it, the more you'll like it. Oh, honey, you're home early. Call for a Master Life store near you. Recently, an object was sighted. It was big. It was just big. Too big to measure with the human eye. Whoa! Did you see that? Very big. Oh, my God! Out of sight, big! It's Bigfoot. I can handle it. 21 tasty slices. Whoa! Now, carry out a Bigfoot pizza with one topping for just $8.99. It's bigger than Pizza Pizza. Bigfoot from Pizza Hut. It's a lot for a little. Call Pizza Hut for carry out now. It's the only place for Bigfoot pizza. Great chocolate taste without added sugar. Try a little TLC today. Tasty, light and creamy products, only in Lakeside Country. Low in fat and calories. Try a little TLC today. Tasty, light and creamy products, only in Lakeside Country. The Maury Povich Show, weekdays at 3 on Keloland TV. Sam here is giving me enough good reasons to use my Dirt Devil hand vac, but now he's giving me five more. When they turn the house upside down, I turn on my Dirt Devil. It's powerful revolving brush, tears into dirt, chews up crumbs, and picks up pet hair. It has an extra long cord, and it's lightweight. So, I'd say my Dirt Devil is the pick of the litter. Right, Sam? <laughs> right. Get a Dirt Devil and put the power of an upright in the palm of your hand. Its design and performance are unsurpassed. Best of all, it saves up to 40% on energy. It's the high-efficiency Lennox Dimension Air Conditioner. Since 1919, Tessiers has set the standard for home comfort. Call Jerry or Chuck and discover the Tessier difference. Meet Rose and Cliff Roth. Saving you money is their business at Roth and Darnell. They sell the best and service the rest. Give us a call. Thank you, Dave. Now get up to $500 cash back or 0% financing. What is me? Geez, that's much bigger. You think that's big? Nothing's bigger than Little Caesar's Big Big Cheese. More cheese, more pepperoni, 24 whopping slices. Big Big Cheese, it's the mother of all pizzas, only 8.88. Pizza, pizza. 
Rose's granddaughter is growing up. We thought Rick and I could share a room. Sounds like a cold day in hell. Maybe too fast. Oh, no, I'm too late. All new Golden Palace. Then get Dudley's advice on career management. Being a musician, it's a worthwhile endeavor. It'll give you something to fall back on in case this hoodlum thing doesn't work out. All new Dudley after the Golden Palace, Friday. To save a young boy's life. He slipped into a coma. How will a town come together? This is none of your business. You're not the only one who loves that boy. Dr. Quinn, Saturday. Health Beat with Bobby Lauer. Weeknights on Kelloland News at 6. Keep on rolling! Once you get a good thing going, why not keep on rolling? And the best way to keep things rolling is to keep working harder. To roll back prices. Roll back, we're gonna keep on rolling. Look around. There's a lot more that's a lot less at Walmart. Gotta keep on rolling. Roll back America. We never stop rolling back prices. Walmart. Gotta keep on rolling. Always low prices. Always. At J.C. Penney, you'll find more things that last. Because we put quality first. We feel better. And look brighter. With more things made to stand up. More things designed to lie down. And more things you can count on. Over. And over. And while quality is something we look for first. Our great values have made us. A name that lasts. J.C. Tonight on Kelloland News, we get an inside look at the end of the penitentiary uprising. There are some similarities between this riot and the one in 1980. We'll be talking with one of the key people involved in ending the 1980 dispute and find out how prison history has repeated itself. Retired Warden Herm Solom will join us for Eye on Kelloland. Chad McKenzie is watching our weather. Join us for 10 at 10, 10 solid minutes of the latest news, weather, and sports.
Okay. Hoping we're live. As always, there's around a 30 second stream. Okay, there I am. All right. Well, welcome to, I guess you could say, a, uh, a makeup edition of the Archive Land Public Domain Theater. So, back on Thursday night, I tried to show Harold Lloyd's final film, The Sin of Harold Diddlebach, and I don't know what happened, but uh, the frame rate, I think, maxed out at about seven frames per second over the course of the night, and it was usually more like three frames a second. And I, I ruled out my computer. I did actually two private live streams last night. Uh, one I let run for like 75 minutes and I was changing settings and changing uh, media and running high bitrate stuff and all sorts of things, you know, trying to see where the limits were for my computer. And as it turns out, I was not exceeding them at all. But uh, yeah, my computer is okay. And so, okay, maybe it's the Wi-Fi. So tonight I am running Ethernet to my laptop, which is just out of the shot here. And uh, if it still screws up, that means something is wrong on YouTube's end. But uh, anyway, yes, this is intended to be a makeup for Thursday night. And uh, also, yes, I am making Diddlebach a verb now. So that, that's what I'm gonna call screw-ups now, I think, the Diddlebach. So anyway, tonight we are going to see three short films, two reels a piece, about 20 to 25 minutes a piece, uh, from William Claude Dukenfield, better known as W.C. Fields, uh, the very famous uh, comedian, kind of peaked in the early talkie era, certainly a pre-code, although he did some good stuff after that too. Uh, he started in vaudeville, had a very, very long run in vaudeville, and mostly as a, ma a magician, I should say. So uh, somewhere the comedy seeped in, and somewhere the alcohol seeped in, and uh, somewhere the misanthropic streak kicked in and got bigger and bigger and bigger. And uh, it's kind of weird uh, tonight. The three shorts that I'm going to show, they're in chronological order. But actually, the level of, uh, I'm just going to swear tonight, assholery, it varies. Actually, he's the least of a jerk in the final one. But that's because the last one is a uh, pastiche slash parody of a specific type of thing as opposed to a normal W.C. Uh, Fields bit. So anyway, uh, tonight we are going from Laserdisc. And I am going to pull these from this fairly common set. Unfortunately, it's uh, hard to get far enough back to get a real good shot of this thing. But uh, yeah, you can, you, you can pick this thing up for about the cost of shipping on Fleabay at any given time. So anyway, uh, actually the prints on this are quite good. These are uh, from Janus Films, if you're familiar with them. Uh, I think these prints are actually uh, from the late 60s, early 70s. But yes, the films are from the early 30s. And uh, I'm going to do this, uh, I guess you could say a bit Joe Bob Briggs style tonight, in that since we're doing shorts, I'm just going to talk about each short, then show the short, and, you know, come back and forth, come in and out of it here uh, behind the old box. So our first short is from 1930, and it's called The Golf Specialist. And uh, we're kind of starting at the bottom here. This is the crude one. This is the shrill one. This is the one that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Um, speaking of shrill, the leading lady in this has a voice like, uh, uh, it, it's, dare I say, slightly worse than Yoko Ono, if you want to uh, get right down to it. But uh, in this case, uh, W.C. Fields is a, a uh, not necessarily an outlaw, but just a loser more than anything else that hangs around this hotel in Florida. And I should note, this is all shot on a soundstage, and it's very obvious. This is uh, very stagey. This is from 1930, so it was kind of hard to do on-location stuff with sound quite yet. And um, basically, he is teaching this very shrill, uh, very bored housewife to play golf, unsuccessfully, of course. And of course, everything goes wrong for Fields, 
but at the same time it never really amounts to anything and uh, really even his dialogue isn't all that sharp here uh, it gets better as the night goes on so uh, this is kind of your uh, test for the evening if you can get through this first one i think you'll survive the other two real nice and easy now it does take a minute to load a laser disc so i'm gonna try and let you see the loading process directly but if I think it drags a lot, I do have a few stray one-off commercials at the ready, so I may have to pop those in at some point. But anyway, let's get to our first feature, if you will, for the night. The Golf Specialist from 1930. to flirt with you? Huh? Oh. Now, if any of these birds annoy you, just let me know. Yeah, Tubby, dear. Gee, did you see what he did to that poor fellow? Boy, that house detective's wife is going to get some poor guy murdered. She'll flirt with anybody that wears pants. <laughs> Not me, little bright eyes. Join your party. Oh, yeah. Hey, you. Is there a gig by the name of J. Effington Bellwether camping in this joint? Mr. Bellwether is out. Well, he'll be out like a light if he don't come through with the 40 bucks he owes me for taking him out in my fishing boat. Why, the chisel has been giving me the runaround for me, too. And I'm going to take it out of his hide. You tell the big lob that. Mr. Bellwether is a guest in this hotel. I can't deliver any such message. But if you care to, you can leave him a note. Well, uh, I broke my tongue. Uh, will you just write it out for me? Certainly, with pleasure. Well, come in, sir. Dear Mr. Bellwether, listen, you four fleshing horse collar. If you don't come through with the jack you owe me, I'll knock your sappy looking block off. There ain't no heel like you. Gonna put nothing over on me without getting a knuckle massage. <laughs> Affectionately yours, Deep Sea McGoik, alias the Slaughterhouse Kid. Finny. Now, uh, don't forget and give that baloney bellwether that. Okay. Hey, oh. 
Happy days are here, Hello, Walter. How do you do, Mr. Bellwether? Any uh, telegrams, cablegrams, radios, televisions? Yes, sir. Huh? A little note. A little note. Oh, thank you, Walter. Thank you, my bonny boy. Sailing in Bellwether. Happy days are here, Walter. Silly little girl. Dangerous things, those lighters. I bought one in Copenhagen one time. It was a combination cigar lighter and matchbox. The matches were very good. Hello, mister. Uh, hello, little boy. Can you give me the camera? Oh, it's a little girl. Hello, little girl. How old are you? Five years old. Five years old. Will you? I'll give you a dollar to put in your bank, if you'll sing me a song. Give me the dollar first. Ah, uh, you're more than five. Go on, get out of here. Ah, uh, come on. Come on, give slam. Me Who's Craig? Get away. I don't care. I got fifty dollars in my bank already. You have fifty dollars in your bank? Yes. <laughs> uh, uh, Probably has a pin sticking in there. Yeah. Well, What's well, Mr. Bellwether, what are you doing down in Florida? Oh, I was uh, just negotiating for a bank. That's your little girl? I don't know whose little girl it is, but she's trying to get money out of me. <laughs> she's a wonderful little child, though. I was just playing with her silken hair. You just can lift a silk me up by my hair if you want to. I can lift her up by her hair if I want to. She's as gay as a pebble. Mom, look, look at that. Isn't it wonderful? It really is remarkable, and light as a feather. Light. Mom, lift me up, lift me up. <laughs> he wants me to do it again. You know, it really is something to be proud of. Yes, it's marvelous, you little mink shoe, you wonderful lift little girl. Lift me way up. Wants me to lift her way up. Wants me to show it to everybody in the hotel, look. <laughs> Why, it's little, little, uh, little people. Say. Was that guy trying to flirt with you? Who? Oh, you big silly. There hasn't been a man anywhere near me. Oh, don't try to kid me. If I catch him playing around you again, I'll pulverize him. Oh, you're such a big brute. Now, if any of these fellows make any wise cracks to you, just tip me off. All right, Daddy dear. How do you do? Oh. <laughs> oh, I beg your pardon. Rather silly of me, wasn't it? No, was that your father? Oh, no. And he was about to strike you? Well, perhaps he would have if you hadn't been here. Why, the big, great, hulking brute. You know, I've never struck a woman in my life. You haven't? Not even my own mother. Oh, I could see that you were the very soul of kindness. Oh, I'm very kind. But, of course, I can be cruel if needs be. You can. Oh, a veritable tiger. Oh, but you have courage written all over you. It's the laundry marks, dear. Oh. <laughs> oh, they're going to play golf. Yeah. Oh, it must be wonderfully romantic and secluded out on the golf course. Oh, it's a marvelous game. I'm going to play this afternoon myself. Would you like to join me? Oh, I'd love to. Uh, do you play? Oh, no. I wouldn't even know which end of the caddy to use. Oh, but you do know something about it. Permit me. Thank you. Oh, I just love it out here. 
so nice and green and yes, everything. Yes, it is. Rather parky this morning, Mo. Mm -hmm. I have never been off to Carly Golf Course in all my life. Little sissy, did you bring a ball with you? Wonderful. Now stay in clear and keep your eye on the ball. Everything is formed. Mm -hmm. This is what they call the explosion shot from the tea. Ah! Won't hurt you, won't hurt you at all. Oh. Stay in clear, boy. Wrong club. What? Wrong club. Try this putting niblick. A putting niblick? <laughs> really, the little chap doesn't understand the nomenclature of the game. Now stand clear, boy, and keep your eye on the ball. <coughs> I have it. It's all right. Stand clear. Stand. <coughs> uh, it's all right. Come here. Stand back here. He gets all hot and bothered about nothing. I lost a really dear friend in the Canary Islands many years. What are you doing with a club like this in the bag? Don't play with these clubs. I lost a really dear friend in the Canary Islands many years ago. How dreadful. Chap the name of Pumphrey Pothel Whistle. Oh, what a funny name. Uh, it's one of the Pothel Whistles from Twickingham. If you've ever been to Twickingham... Hey, hey. Pumphrey, will you? What? Yes, he is. Yes. Yes, he is. Mm. <laughs> uh. Mm. Yeah. Yes, we lost all the the whistle in the Canary Islands. He was kicked to death. Oh, that's a shame. Uh, he was kicked to death by two infuriated canary birds. Oh, what is this? Someone had been feeding them meat. I happened to... Excuse me, I... Strange about that glass? Yes, it does look rather odd. Yeah. I think the shaft is warped. Give me another bag. Ah, that's better. Uh, that's much better. Yes. Now stand here, boy, and keep your eye on the ball. This is what they call hitting past the scene, as I told you before. Really remarkable stuff. Here after all, a pie. Fancy bringing a pie to a golf course. A pint, yes, but a pie never. Why, it's like uh, it's like carrying carrying uh, something or other somewhere or other, as the case may be. You stand clear and keep your eye on this ball. <coughs> Stand there, boy, keep your eye on the ball. Stand for... Quite a breeze. Yes, there is quite a breeze. Yes, yes there is. Quite a breeze. Yeah. Here's your overcoat. Oh. Oh. Now stand there, boy, keep your eye on the ball. Thank you, saying this is hitting past the chin. Yeah. Hitting as far past the chin as possible. Then never stand close to the ball when you hit it up, you hit it. Sounds like one of those birds that fly backwards. Oh. Then clear boy, fly on the ball. It's coming this way. Stop it, you stay still. 
stand clear and keep your eye on the ball. Stand still. Don't get moving around here with those inhabited feet of yours. As I was saying, it requires a great deal of quiet nerve and slow You stand still and keep your eye on the ball. I'm sorry, dear, to lose my temper, huh? What is it? Oh, Godfrey Daniel. or chop soy or whatever it is they have there, so much else. As I said, I'd like to wring your neck. I'd like to wash it first and then give it a good ring. Give it a ring that here for miles, miles. Will you take that out, please? Well, yes, of course. Thank you. Put it in there. Girl. Right. Thank you. It was really disgusting. Oh, it's terrible. I'm sorry that you had to see this. That's all right. Mm -hmm. Now, stand there and keep your eye on the ball. Hello, Sheriff. Oh, yeah. The Sheriff is looking for Mr. Bellwether. Ooh. Well, where is he? He's out playing golf with your wife. With my wife? Come on, holy smoke, let's get it. There it is. Huh? There. Where? On the end of your club. Oh. So it oh, is, so it oh, is. Yes. What an eye he has. Mm. Now you stand clear and keep your eye on the ball. Oh, I've forgotten something. Huh? Oh. Probably forgotten her horse. Well, I won't need it anyway. Won't need a horse. Want to ride it? I won't need it either. Here's a club for you for short holes. Now, stay clear. Keep your eye on the ball. I lost a horse one time. I forgot him. I left him down the Grand Canyon. Grand Canyon, that's a beautiful camel you have with you. Crazy about me. Now stand clear, boy. Don't stand there. Don't you know I'll smite you in the sconce with this truncheon? <laughs> He's standing right to go boom away. Great <laughs> silly Ha, <laughs> 
I'll have to have it reblocked. Oh, that's a shame. Yes. Thanks. Thanks for nothing. You stay clear and keep your eye on this ball. I was saying this is hitting past the chin. Stand clear, Bar. I'll key that up to you. All right. I'll stay and clear and keep your eye on the ball. Another thing I forgot to tell you was, keep the wrists together. Never let the wrists separate. Take the club back slowly. No, no. Oh! I was saying before, you've got to keep the wrists close together. Never let the wrists... Keep the wrists close together. Close together. Never let the wrists separate. Keep them close together. Keep the wrists close together. Well, as I mentioned, that was the turd of the lot. If you can make it through that one, you can make it through the other two shorts tonight quite easily. Uh, for me personally, the only laugh I got out of that whole thing was the list of Fields' alleged crimes. Uh, possessing a skunk, eating spaghetti in public. Uh, he, yeah, um, I, I'm pretty sure some of those jokes were cliches already back then, too. But uh, yeah, uh, only three of Fields' shorts have confirmed fallen into the public domain. So that kind of dictated which ones I'm running tonight. So anyway, we're on to the second one. And I think arguably Fields' most famous short. This is called The Dentist from 1932. And this is, uh, has actually appeared on Archive at one point. Back in 2018, I did an episode where I tried to make my own mock drive-in theater sort of thing. Uh, I think it's just called the Archive Drive-In or something. I did it. It was one of the first ones I did after moving here to South Dakota in 2018. But um, this uh, has also appeared a handful of times uh, on Archive by way of a Black Hawk Films uh, preview reel for the longest time of the only sound reel I owned. Uh, well, I guess that's not true. I think I had one before that. But anyway, that's irrelevant here. I digress. So anyway, this is called The Dentist, and uh, shock of shocks, Fields plays a, a dentist here. Now, he goes golfing again in this one, too, but it's actually on a golf course, and the jokes are a little better thought through. And you, you might recognize some of the faces in here. Uh, Bud Jameson comes to mind if you've seen enough Three Stooges shorts. Now, by this point, this is going to sound really weird, but uh, Fields had gone on to Mac Sennett Studios, a name we usually associate with the fairly early silence, uh, like uh, 1910 to 18 thereabouts, peaking in 1914 with the arrival of Charlie Chaplin. But uh, if you've seen any of uh, Senate's shorts, uh, although I don't think he had any great hand in this one, they're pretty bad. Uh, there's a few of them on YouTube. And actually, there's one uh, from my friend uh, Rick Klein, who runs Fuzzy Memories, where it's uh, an off-air recording with commercials. And, and the commercials are far better than the movie. But uh, this one actually manages to escape the late period uh, Max Senate curse. Uh, he did make the transition to sound, Senate that is, but didn't do a whole lot with it. But uh, in this case, as I mentioned, Fields plays a dentist in a really lazy and a really rotten one. And I haven't watched this particular print in a while, so I don't remember how censored it is. 
but there is a bit where he's uh, working on a patient. He does eventually get to his office. Um, there's a bit where he's supposedly pulling a tooth, but it looks like him and the female patient are getting intimate. But it seems like most prints of this have this cut out to varying degrees, but I don't remember where this one falls necessarily. So it'll be a shock to me too. Uh, this is definitely pre-code stuff. This is kind of uh, pushing the boundaries of pre-code. And uh, another thing that would get censored with these things is Fields could make some pretty snide remarks at times, and he would do some low-level cursing too. And you didn't hear a whole lot of hells and dams in movies back in the early 30s. So this was kind of edgy stuff for the time. Now, of course, in a perfect world, I would be able to run my personal favorite Fields vehicle, My Little Chickadee from 1940, which was also uh, with Mae West. They co-starred, and I just love that they kind of ratchet each other up, and I guess they really hated each other, and that's why they were always kind of ratcheting each other up. So uh, even this, I wouldn't say, is the best of Fields. Not even really the best short of the night. My personal favorite is our third and final one, but yes, let... Uh, let's get into The Dentist. Ocean, another baby. Not to tell Mary, not that. Say. <laughs> That's a funny one. Look. Fifty pounds and chop it fine. Mrs. Uncle Beck, what do you mean, fifty pounds and chop it fine? Oh, I thought you were Arthur. Who's Arthur? He's the man I intend to marry. Oh, well, don't tell me anything about it. I'm only your father. I can read in the newspaper. What does he do for a living? Well, he's the ice man. An ice man? Yeah, he goes to college. He's a Cornell man. Red Grange was an ice man. He's still an ice man as far as I'm concerned. Put it down there and get out. Okay. Go. And stay. Now you're so smart, how are you going to get it in the ice box? I'll put it in myself. Listen, don't ever do that. Back to me. Yeah. How'd you do it? Well, easy. Where's my golf club? 
In your golf bag. Yeah, but where's the golf bag? You just fell over it. Yeah, I'd say that. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. There's another one. Oh, that good old burn, I tell you. What's my first appointment this morning? Miss Pipitone at 10.30. Why, well, I just have time for 18 holes. Where's my cap? You never wear any. Oh, yeah, that's right. Where's the ice? In the ice box. There's just a little piece left. Now I'll have to get some more. Yeah, keep that ice man out of here. I'm going to order a fresh air. Well, that's mine. Oh, yeah. Well, we can't look for it all day. We've been out at 20 minutes now, and I gotta get back to the office half past 10. I'm gonna drop another ball. Okay, drop another. If it isn't unfair to either of you gentlemen, I can tell you where the ball is. Where? Under that leaf. Thanks. It isn't unfair to either one of us. We've been looking for the ball 20 minutes. Four. I'd wait a minute. They're still on the green. Well, let them get out of the way. This is certainly a great game for your health. <laughs> connection may be dropped without penalty, no nearer the hole. Get those teeth out of there, too. They're right in my line. Two. You can't do that. What do you mean I can't do it? Read the card. You had Drops two in the wa what? Don't you, you had two Don't quibble, don't quibble, don't quibble, don't quibble. Snappy little hole, don't you think so? Yes, it is. Give me the Marcy Niblet. Marcy Niblet. Oh, all right. Four! Four! What am I doing? Having a basket party over there? Look at those ducks. Oh. Oh, they're going to play golf when I've done this time. Don't stand there. Stand over here. Those ducks have drawn me off. Okay. Don't stand behind me when I'm shooting. You told me to stand over there, sir. Never mind where I told you to stand. You stand where I tell you. That kid's a dummy. He doesn't know what time it is. Say, by the way, what time is it? I don't know. 10.15. Shut up, will you? Stand clear and keep your eye on the ball. Oh, wait, you can't do that. What do you mean I can't do that? I can do anything I want to do. Hello, Joe. Hiya, Doc. How about a little golf? Uh, I just threw my clubs away. <laughs> what, again? Hey, the funniest thing happened. 
I'm taking my second stroke. I beat an old geezer on the sconce with my ball. Right near the green was headed for the pin. The ball rolls back into a water connection. I pick it up, drop it over my shoulder. It dribbles down into the hole. I'm down in two. Well, uh... What do you mean, well? They gave me the same argument. I'm down in two. Look at the back of the car. They wanted me to do it over again after I had a fine drop. All right, so, well, I... <laughs> oh, my, you like that. Where's the soap? It's in your hand. Huh? Oh. <laughs> How about tomorrow, Doc? Uh, what time? Oh, about. No, I won't be able to go. Why not? I'm going duck shooting. Well, I'll run along. And I say, boy, you should have been there. I took this mashy nibbling. Oh! I picked the straight shot for the pin. It beams this old geezer. Down into the water connection it goes. Coming back. Oh! Oh! Drops into the water connection. I pick it up and drop it over my shoulder and down into the hole it goes. Well, I'll give you a ring tomorrow, Doc. <laughs> okay. Well, they burn up. He could have fried eggs on the back of his neck. Oh! Send her in. Oh. How do you do? Will you sit down? Put it in here, please. You won't hurt my leg, will you? My doctor says I have a very bad leg. Your doctor is off his nut. I don't believe in doctors anyway. There's a doctor who lives right down the street here. Treated a man for yellow jaundice for nine years. Then found out he was a Jap. You know, a little dog bit me Dr. the other Kulikov. day. Dr. Kulikov. He bit me right here. Dog bit you? Yes. It was a little dash hound. Oh, oh yeah. a little tiny dog. Mm -hmm. And he sneaked right up behind me and bit me right like that. You're rather fortunate it wasn't a Newfoundland dog that bit you. Can you sit down? Shall I use gas? Well, gas or electric lights. I'd feel nervous to have you fool around me in the dark. <laughs> I just want to look in there. Come on. Come on now. I'll try not to be so cruel this time. Come on, come on. Oh, oh Doctor, I can't let you do that again. Mm. Oh. Tell her I'm out. But, Doctor, she has a three o'clock appointment. I wouldn't care if she had a four o'clock appointment. Boy, when I was in Darjeeling, oh, it was tigers, how they huh? Tell her I'm out. Don't go on out there and tell her I'm out. How do you know? How do you know? We've been waiting for you. <laughs> Sit down. When I tell you to go out and tell one of these palookas that I'm out, go out and tell them I'm out. Don't have these buzzards walk in on me. I when I don't want to see him, I don't.
just come in for the ride? Haven't I seen your face somewhere before? Oh, probably you've seen me at the horse show. Jockey? Sir? Hmm. Oh, yeah. Can you open your mouth? Uh, come on now, you got a bigger mouth than that opener. Hmm. Oh, beautiful. Hmm. Hand me that uh, 404 circular buzz saw, will you? Dropping, 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 dropping. Is that a 404 conical you can me? Ah, hear those pennies fall. Pardon me for just a moment. You wouldn't let Arthur come here to see me, so I'm going to see him. Excuse me a moment, folks. Stay in there. Now, what do you think of that? Keep you waiting. <gasps> you said a mouthful there. Don't be a little sense just a moment there. All your lines busy? Oh, Came out easily, didn't it? Yes, it did. Yes, it did. It was a surprise to me. Uh, excuse me, just. Uh, uh. Open that door! I can't. You locked me in. Where's the key? In your pocket. Huh? Oh. Any patients? Miss Minky. Uh huh? before? No! This won't hurt you much.
I'm going to give her gas. You're not going to pull me out around the floor. Relax. Would you like a drink? What is it? Water. No, thanks. Stop! Cease! Well, it won't be long now. That female wrestler gone? Yes, she's gone. Is he standing in a hole? No, he's just a little fella. Hmm. Send him in, I'll fix him. This way, please. How do you do? How's everything up in Moscow? Got two strikes on the boys, eh? Will you sit down? Thank you. I can't find his mouth. Hand me that stethoscope, will you? Thanks. Will you say ah, oh, please? Ah. Oh. Again? Ah. Oh. Again? Ah. Oh. I almost had it. Again? Ah. Ha. Ah. Oh. Ah. 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 Thank you. Now, just open your mouth. This can't hurt. Okay. <laughs> you can't say that hurt you. Man. Don't be silly. I got her locked in the room. But they're using a ladder. Where do you think you're going? That's him. So you're the guy that hit my father in the head. Yeah, if you want to make anything out of it. I'd like to see you do that again. Is it necessary for him to do it again? No, it isn't. Father, you're not really going to buy a fridge there, are you? Fifty pounds will make it snappy. Okay, that was The Dentist, and a, a step up from the first short, I think. Uh, of course, it's always interesting reading the chat when I'm doing these things, because uh, we got some younger viewers that aren't really in tune with this stuff. Uh, consider this your uh, film history lesson. Consider this uh, learning to watch old movies. It certainly helps in archive land, doesn't it? Anyway, uh, we're going to move on to the final short for the night, and my personal favorite of the bunch. This is called The Fatal Glass of Beer. It's from 1933 and still under uh, Max Sennett. But uh, this is a, a kind of an anomaly amongst W.C. Fields' shorts and features in that he's not playing quite his usual jerk self. Uh, and he's also not drinking. He's really not getting into much of any trouble in this one. He plays a very noble guy in this one. However, and I, this is where I'm definitely going to have to explain this to our younger viewers, this next film is a genre parody. This is a parody 
of uh, stage melodramas from the late 19th and early 20th century. Uh, very, very corny uh, plots, stupid plots, stupid dialogue. And in this case, and, and I should note, uh, Fields wrote all of tonight's shorts as well. Uh, in this case, he ratchets it up to 11. This is as willfully over-the-top stupid as you can get. But at the same time, it's, uh, in my opinion, a very good parody of that style of theater. And uh, better yet, for the few action sequences that there are, they are intentionally bad. Uh, it's rear projection, and it makes no spatial sense whatsoever. Um, it, you could say this is a, a fairly meta film, for its time. But uh, yeah, this is going to seem especially weird to our younger viewers, but hopefully with that little bit of context, it makes a little more sense. Now I need to flip the disc over for this one, so this might take about 30 to 45 seconds, but uh, let's do our final short for the night, The Fatal Glass of Beer. And there is no beer in this. got a situation in a quarry, and there he made the acquaintance of some college students. He little thought they were demons, for they wore the best of clothes, but the clothes do not always make the gentleman. So they tempted him to drink. And they said he was a car until at last he took the fatal glass of beer. When he found what he'd done, 
He danced the glass upon the floor, and he staggered through the door with delirium screamants. Once upon the sidewalk, he met a Salvation Army girl, and wickedly he broke her tambourine. All she said was, Heaven, Heaven bless you, and placed a mark upon his brow. With a kick she'd learned before she had been saved. Now as a moral to young men who come down to the city, don't go around breaking people's tambourines. That certainly is a sad song. <laughs> don't cry, Constable. It is a sad song. My uncle Ichabod said, Speaking of the city, it ain't no place for women, gal, but pretty men go there. He <laughs> always said something to make you split your sides of laughing. <laughs> Comical old gentleman he was. Well, I think I'll be a high tail and over the rim. And it ain't a fit night out for man or beast. <laughs> Right out. Any gold down the golf pole? Found that nougat right be on the table. A nougat? A golden nougat? Just what you've been a combing them bar hills for, for nigh on to 30 years. It must be worth almost a hundred dollars. It'll help to pay off the mortgage on the old shack. Has that pill for medicine hat been here again? Yes, and he wants more money. Rather's hide. 
He wants more money, and if he don't get it, he'll take our Malamute. He won't take old Balto, my lead dog. Why not, Paul? Because I had him. You had him? He was mighty good with mustard. We was a mushing over Blind Nag Rim last night, and I got mighty hungry. You better take your mucklocks off, Paul. Captain Pippiton of the Canadian Mounted smuggled a police dog across the border for you. Smuggled a police dog across the border for me? Yes, and he says for you to keep it under your hat. How big is it? About so high. He's crazy. Paul, it's just three years today since they put our dear son in jail for stealing them our bonds. And I know he never stole them. Sure he never stole them. Our Chester never stole nothing from nobody. Hardly ever. Do you think he'll come a-heading for home when they turn him loose from that plague of jail? I reckon guess and calculate he will, Ma. Chester! Our town Our own Chester! my darling boy! And it ain't a fit night out, a man of peace. <laughs> Don't cry, Ma. We got our son back again, ain't we? Welcome home, Chester. Thank you, Paul. And I don't suppose we'll have him with us long. Once the city gets into a Bahoy system, he loses his hankering for the country. Sit down, Chester. Thank you, Paul. <laughs> Will you have some soup, Chester? That's my soup, Ma. <coughs> Hand me that bread I was dunking, will you? Thanks. Dad, I ain't ever going to leave the old farm again. I've come back here to stay with you and Ma. And I ain't ever going to leave again. <laughs> I'm so glad to be back home with you and Mom, but I can't talk. I'd like to go to my little bedroom and lay on the bed and cry like I was a baby again. <laughs> Lie down and take a little rest first, Chester. Well, good night, Paul. Good night, Chester. Good night, Ma. Good night, Chester. Sleep well, Chester. Thank you, Paul. You too. Thank you, Chester. Sleep well, Chester. Thank you, Ma. You sleep well. Don't Thank forget you. to open the window a bit, Chester. Don't forget to open yours a bit, Paul. I won't. Yes, Chester. don't forget to open your window a bit, Chester. Put yours up a bit too, Ma. Good night, Chester. Good night, Good night Paul. Good night. Good night. Good night, Ma. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night, Chester. I think I'll go out and milk the elk. Don't forget your moose horn, Paul. Thank you, Ma. And it ain't a fit night out, a man or beast.
Lino. Lino, honey. Papa's calling. Papa's calling you. I stole them bonds. I was a bank messenger, and they caught me fair and square. I wasn't framed. I know you stole them, but I never would admit it to your father. If he thought you stole them, it would break his poor old heart. Never tell him any different. Good night, Chester. Good night, Ma. And it ain't a fit night out, a man or beast. Chester gone to bed yet, Ma? I don't think so, Paul. I speak to you a minute, son? Yes, Paul. Chester, did you steal them bonds? I know you stole them, son, but I never would admit it to your mother. She thinks you're innocent. You must never tell her any different. She thought you stole them. It would break her poor old heart. Oh, it's so good to be home, Dad. I'm going to stay here now with you and Ma for all time. Chester, have you any of them bonds on you? Or any of that money? No, Dad. I ain't got any of them bonds on me. And I took that painted money and threw it away. And you came back to me and mother. Yes, Paul. Hmm. The sponge on us, the rest of you. I right. oh. love you. Oh. You lug squatter. Get up. Get up. you. Squatter. I don't need to pick my out. A man of peace.
Okay. Sometime on some future stream, I need to run Buster Keaton's The Frozen North. It's a, a similar film to that. Uh, although Keaton's film is a, a, more of a parody of uh, some of Tom Mix's films. Tom Mix being the first real westerns star. But uh, yeah, we'll have to see if I can't put together some sort of Keaton night sometime. If I can find some with uh, soundtracks that aren't going to give me uh, trouble on YouTube. Uh, pick out, you know, three good shorts or uh, maybe some sort of uh, unrestored, unfortunately, print of the general. Uh, something like that. I've got a lot of movies that I'd like to show. Um, I got at least one earmarked for the summer. I think I have a good summer movie. I got horror stuff for not just Halloween, but whenever I really feel like it. But anyway, that is going to be it for tonight. Thanks for joining me. Uh, we'll do this again probably in another month or so. I'd say that would be about right. Not quite sure what I'm going to run next time, but uh, it'll be a surprise to all of us. Uh, otherwise, uh, sometime in the future, I hope to make this a little more like a um, TV broadcast of sorts, and we will have a proper sign-off with uh, the national anthem and the color bars and all, but uh, that's still sometime in the future. Anyway, uh, it looks like things went pretty well tonight. I was trying to watch the stream itself instead of my own little monitor and it looked solid. I didn't notice any hiccups or anything. So, um, yeah, I think I made up for the sin of Harold Diddlebach there. Uh, minimal diddlebocking tonight, as it were. Anyway, that is going to be it uh, this week uh, on Audio the Archive. It's going to be my first round of random audio cassettes since 2020. And it's all music this time. So join me later in the week, uh, this coming week, for that. Otherwise, good night, everybody.